Section 5.3 will be broken down into three separate videos, each dealing with a different form or method of factoring. The first method that we're going to discuss is factoring by grouping. And essentially all this is doing is looking at breaking down pieces and finding greatest common factors and then finding greatest common factors between the two broken down pieces. So if you remember from the last section, if we wanted to find the greatest common factor, we would say, okay, this first example, they both have an X in common and we are left with an A plus B as the remaining terms. Now we can do the same thing if we have a whole term, uh, which might be bigger than just a single variable or a single coefficient. So in this case, we have an x plus y in common. Both of these pieces have x plus y. So we can factor out an x plus y, and we are left with 2 minus 5. Now that can be simplified even further because our x plus y stays, and 2 minus 5 is just the coefficient of negative 3. So we can just put that out front, and that's perfectly fine. So I want you to pause the video here and see if you can get example 26. So for example 26, you should have ended up with the common factor of 2 minus z. And then what you're left with are the coefficients, if you will, of x plus y. Now, sometimes it's not as simple as that. Sometimes we actually need to group these things, which is why it's called the method of factoring by grouping. So if we group these first two and we group these second two terms, then we say, okay, what do the first two terms have in common? Well, they both have a 5. So if we factor out that 5, we are left with an x minus y. Now, if you look at the second two terms, what do they both have in common? Well, they have a b. So if we factor out a plus b, because we have that plus there, and then we're left with x minus y. Now we look at them again and we say, what do they have in common? Oh, well, now they have this x minus y in common. And we are left with a 5 plus b. So this is the method known as factoring by grouping. We group two or more terms together, see if we can get something factored out of them, group another set, and see if we can get something out of that. And then we see if they have anything in common when we're done with it. And we can pull out that common factor and we're left with the remaining terms. So in this case, we grouped the first two and the second two. And we found that when we did that, they had things in common. The first group had a 5, the second group had a b. Then once we had factored that, both of those terms ended up having a common factor of x minus y. So we've pulled that out and we're left with a 5 plus b as the other term. So this four term piece ended up factoring into x minus y times the quantity 5 plus b. So let's try another example. If we look at grouping these first two, and you don't always have to group the first two, that's just kind of the common thing that's done. Uh, you can rearrange them. Usually, um, no matter how you group them, you should be able to still factor by grouping. And so if we group the first two in this case, we see that they have a t squared in common. When we factor out a t squared, we're left with a single t from the t cubed and a 1 from the t squared. Don't forget about that 1. Because if we were to multiply this back out, we would end up with t cubed and t squared. So if we look at the second two terms that we have there, the only thing they have in common is a 1. So we want to pull out that one. We want to make sure that we keep the plus there because we are still adding. And then if we factor out the one, we're just left with exactly what we see, which is t plus one. Now we say, okay, between these two terms, we have a t plus one in common. And we are left with a t squared plus one as our um, remaining pieces. Since we have a t squared, we want to check to make sure that we can't factor any further. In this case, it's a sum, it's t squared plus 1, so we can't factor any further. Try a few more examples here. So we'll try a few more examples here. Uh, if we group these first two, uh, they have a 3x in common, and we are left with x squared minus 1. Now be careful when you look at the second piece. 
because if you just factor out a 5, your negative sign is going to be off. If you just factor out a plus 5w, then you're going to be left with negative x squared and plus 1, which does not match what we have there. So that's why we need to be careful. Instead, we want to factor out a negative 5w here. So if we factor out a negative 5w, then this is going to become a positive x squared because we already have the negative out front. And then if we factor out a negative 5w from positive 5w, that is going to leave us with a negative 1. If we were to multiply this through, we would end up with positive 5w. So now we have those like terms, the x squared minus 1, which we can factor out. And we are left with 3x minus 5w. Again, we need to check to make sure, since we have that x squared, if that factors any further. In this case, it does. And x squared minus 1 factors to be x plus 1, x minus 1. And then we have our other term, 3x minus 5w. At this point, I would like you to pause the video and try example 30. So for this last example, you should have seen that the first two have in common a 2x squared, and you're left with 3x minus 2. The only thing that the last two have in common is a 1, so you factor that out and you're left with a 3x minus 2. And so then now they both have a 3x minus 2, which can be factored out front, and the remaining terms are 2x squared plus 1 here. So then you want to make sure that this cannot factor any further. Again, you've got a plus sign here, so that's not going to factor any further. If it had been a minus sign, it's possible that it could have factored more, but in this case, it doesn't. So this concludes the video on factoring by grouping. Uh, the next video will discuss the AC method.